Recif Lore now includes the ability for engineers to model with and design CJ series composite steel joists according to the SJI 200-2015, and including the design of top and bottom cords, bridging, joist seat depth, as well as headed stud size and spacing. So here I have a Risa floor model. I just have some steel columns as well as some wide flange steel framing. And I'm gonna go ahead and add our composite steel framing. So to do that, I'm gonna go ahead and click on our graphical input button. And then I'm gonna choose our generate infill framing. I'm next gonna go ahead and click on steel product. And under the shape group, uh, we won't just choose a regular joist, we can choose the CJ series joist. I also wanna set our beam spacing and our beam orientation. So I'll say our number of equal spaces will be four, and we want our beam orientation to be vertical. When I click apply, I can go ahead and click in the bays. And so I'll just click in these four different bays and create our framing. Next, we're gonna go ahead and add our diaphragm edge. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on create or modify our diaphragm edge. And in this case, I'm gonna do a six inch overhang and we'll keep our di diaphragm type as rigid and we'll consider all the members in this model. So if I click apply, it creates that diaphragm edge all the way around the outside of this particular floor. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and open the floor spreadsheet. And so for this particular case, we can see that we have a beam floor of currently a composite deck. So we wanted to validate that we have a composite deck. So we are indeed using a composite deck and our deck angle is the zero direction or the zero degree angle, which is in the Z direction. We can validate the properties of that composite deck by clicking on our deck definition spreadsheet and going ahead and opening up our material type. So here we see our deck selection. So in this particular case, we're using a Verco deck, a five and a half inch normal weight concrete 19 gauge deck. And so we can see the different databases that are available to us. So we have databases from Volcraft and also from Verco. Additionally, in this database, we can see we can define our stud height, our stud diameter, as well as the tensile strength for those studs. One thing to note here is that the stud diameter for composite steel joist is limited to one half inch, five eighths of an inch, and three quarters of an inch. So in this case, our three quarter of an inch stud diameter will work just fine. So if I go ahead and click okay, and we close this out, the next thing I wanna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and look at our deck direction. So we can see here that we have a composite deck as shown in green, and we can see that that deck is spanning perpendicular to our composite steel joist. So we will get appropriate um, load transfer in this particular case. Finally, I'm gonna go ahead and open up the area load definition spreadsheet. So in this particular case, we're gonna use this office area load definition. So we have a post composite dead load. So just kind of our normal dead load of 20 pounds a square foot. We also have a non-reducible live load in this case of 85 pounds a square foot. And that will be applied to the entire floor system. Additionally though, I want to apply maybe a line load that would represent say a partition. And so in that case, I'm going to go ahead and click on our draw line loads. And for a live load, I'll just enter 0.1, both as the start and the end magnitude and click apply. And I'm going to go ahead and apply that load here in that direction. So we've got that load applied across a few different composite seal joists. Now, once I have all my loads created, I've got my framing done, I've got my diaphragm edge on here, I can go ahead and create some load combinations. So if I go ahead and click on our load combination spreadsheet, we've got some basic combinations created. I'm gonna go ahead and delete these combinations out and use our load combination generator. And so in this case, I'm just gonna go ahead and create the IBC strength level combinations because it's LRFD design that's used for our composite steel joists. We don't need to create any pre-composite or snow or roof live load in this case because we just have dead and live load and we can go ahead and click to generate. And so that's just gonna generate our very straightforward, very simple um, LRFD load combinations in this case. Next, with our load combinations ready, I can go ahead and run the analysis. Now remember, this is gonna do an optimization. So we're gonna go ahead and get our shapes optimized for us based on the fact that we had defined just CJ series joists. And so here we can go ahead and see uh, right off the bat, we've got our shape and size denoted for our individual CJ series. So in this case, the designation follows the requirements of the Steel Joist Institute and includes the following. So that first dimension or that first number, that 40 is the depth in inches of the joist. The next number, in this case, 2837, that's the total factored load on the joist. Then we have a number 1700 in this case. 
That's our total factored live load. And then finally, that 300 is the total factored composite dead load. So we've got these different uh, designations as well as the number of studs that are listed. Now, if we want to know more, we can go ahead and in our results spreadsheets, look at our design results. And so if I select steel products, we can see our various design results for those individual composite steel joists. So we have our size or our designation. We have our uniformly distributed dead load, our uniform live load, our total load, and then also our min and max reactions. Additionally, we can go ahead and look at our deflection results. So these deflection results for these individual members, we can see our dead load, our live load, and our total load deflection. Finally, if we want to see all the information or more detailed information, we can go ahead and use the detailed report. So I'm going to click on detailed and just select one of these composite seal joists here. I'll go ahead and expand this particular detailed report, just make it a little bit bigger so we can see. And I'm going to switch to a load combination in this case, so looking at our dead load combination. So here we can see just the basic information, including the shape group, as well as the code we're using, the number of studs. We can see our loading diagram. So here's our loading diagram for this particular member. And we can also see all of our information for our composite design. Now I want to go ahead and click on one of these members that have our uh, live partition load on it. And so if we go ahead and again and look at that category and we switch our uh, our load case or load combination, we can see that point load on there. We can also see how that potentially impacts our design. So in this case, we have our composite bending requirements. So we can see our composite design, the number of studs we've defined in this case, so 60, which matches what we have here on the drawing. We can also see our composite section properties, also our bottom and top cord design. So we can see the angles that are used for those. We also have the bridging design and specifically the number of bridging lines the seat depth, so the joist seat depth, and then the joist self weight. And then finally, we have our deflection requirements. So we can see our live load deflection compared to the span ratio. So we can see our kind of unity check here for our deflections. So as you can see, the new composite joist functionality included in Risa Floor allows users to analyze and design composite steel joists in traditional structural analysis and design software, making it easier for engineers to specify them in their designs. For more information about composite steel joists, as well as other new features included in Risa Floor, please visit risa.com.